Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on mixing insulins. Now the two insulins that we can mix in one insulin syringe is regular insulin and NPH. And because the two insulins have a different onset peak and duration, we have to be very careful that we don't contaminate drawing up one insulin and inadvertently putting it in the other because then the onset peak and duration are mixed and we no longer have what we expect to be in there and that could adversely affect the patient. So we always need to double check that we um, administer the correct dosages but also this technique for mixing insulins in one syringe is a very particular one. First of all, regular insulin is clear. We also refer to it as clear insulin. And then NPH comes kind of cloudy. This here is a demo dose, but it's very similar to the actual insulin. So as you can see on the bottom, there's some precipitation. So I wanna make sure I roll the vial first to kind of mix it up. What you don't wanna do is shake it because that might create some air bubbles. And if you've ever drawn insulin up before, it's not that easy to get these air bubbles out. So I'm going to mix this up. I'll probably have to mix it again once I'm a little bit uh, more ready to go. So then, of course, I'm always going to perform hand hygiene and uh, don my gloves. I want to um, also tell you that today we're going to draw up five units of regular and 10 units of NPH. So first things first, this is a brand new vial, so I'm gonna open up the cap, use my alcohol wipe, and clean the top of that rubber stopper vigorously for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds. I always like to keep the alcohol wipe on top and then use a second one to clean the other vial. That way I know which one has been cleaned and which one is ready to go. Now the tricky part here, because we want to mix the insulins in the syringe only and not in the vial, and we always have to insert air into any vial before we withdraw the medication, there is a certain order that we have to go by. So we're going to, it is less harmful, let's put it this way, it's less harmful if the regular insulin gets in the NPH because regular insulin's onset peak and duration are shorter than the NPH. But if I was to put NPH in the regular insulin, now I expect this insulin to last for maybe four to six hours, but I have some NPH in there. Now this insulin is going to last a lot longer, which really, if you think about it, might make the patient hypoglycemic. So I wanna be extra careful that I don't get any NPH into the regular insulin. So I've cleaned them both. And there is a saying, it goes um, cloudy, clear, clear, cloudy. So think about a, a nice um, a bright day. It's cloudy in the morning, it gets clear during the day, it stays clear in the afternoon, and it gets cloudy in the evening. Uh, there are other acronyms you can use for that, but just think about what you don't want to happen. Clearly, we don't want any one of the insulins to be mixed in the other vial, but the worst case scenario would be getting the longer acting into the shorter acting vial. So we're going to, we said, use 10 units of NPH and five units of regular insulin, which makes a total of 15 units. But because I need to insert the air first, with my insulin, insulin syringe, I'm going to draw up the 10 units first that I'm going to insert into the NPH. So I'm just gonna take it here. The, the mixing up right now doesn't matter because I'm not really dealing with the liquid, I'm just inserting the air. And I do not wanna turn this vial upside down because then I could get insulin on or liquid onto the needle that I could then inadvertently carry over to the other one. So I'm gonna insert the five units, the 10 units here, and then insert the five units in the regular vial. Now because I'm going to draw up the clear first, so for the air, cloudy, then clear, for drawing up, clear, and then cloudy. So I inserted the five units, I can invert my vial and draw up the five units. 
and I'm pretty lucky here I don't have any air bubbles so double checking there might be a small one right there so I'm just gonna flick this and see if there's anything on the move okay so no air bubbles and now I need to drop the NPH. So now I need to be very careful not to push any of this regular insulin in the NPH vial. So I cannot draw back on the plunger once the needle has been inserted in the NPH vial. Draw it up vigorously because that might create some turbulence and let some of the fluid go back. So I need to do this very slowly and I need to also only go to the 10 to the 15 unit mark because then I have my total of 5 regular and 10 NPH drawn up. If I were to go a little bit further than the 10 units, then I don't know exactly what my mix ratio is. I clearly have too much NPH and I have to discard the syringe and start over. So this is very critical. So we've already inserted the air, so now I'm going to withdraw the 10 units and I'm seeing it's become a little bit cloudy where well, the sediment has settled there. So I'm gonna just gently swirl and shake the vial. And that is mostly to help with the concentration. Otherwise, if it's not dissolved correctly, you're also not going to get the correct dose. Okay. I have a little more sediment here, so I'm just going to set my syringe aside carefully and swirl this a little bit more until it's completely dissolved. Now since I'm not sure if I touch the top of the rubber stopper I'm just gonna give this another little wipe here and continue to swirl because I don't want it to settle sometimes it's a little bit of a give and take. So now I am ready to withdraw my 10 units very carefully. So no air inserted because I've already done that. So I'm going to put the needle in and then carefully withdraw the 10 units. The 10 additional units. So now I need to go down to 15. Okay. So I'm at 15. I don't see any air bubbles, so I withdraw my needle. Carefully recap my needle with the one-handed technique to make sure I don't accidentally stab myself and go hypoglycemic. Take a vial and help to push it on there. And then I can actually move this little safety device over to the side a little bit so that you can see that I have a total of 15 units right here and the 15 is right there. And that is the correct mix of my insulins, five units of regular and 10 units of NPH. Then I go ahead and I label the syringe appropriately, do all my patient rights and go administer it to my patient. Thanks so much for watching this video on mixing insulins, which is a super important skill like I said, not, not many times used anymore, but also check my other skills videos about medication administration. Thanks for watching. See you soon.